Good morning everyone. So today I have for you the new Tonic Craft Kit. It's called Vintage Pop-Up Sentiment Creator. So we're going to check that out in just a minute. But Tonic uh, did sponsor this video and they did send these items free of charge from my review and all opinions are my own. And any links down in the description box will be affiliate links which means I make a small commission if you purchase items those links. Uh, I'm going to open this up just to get the glare out of here. But again, it's the new design of the box here that you're seeing. Um, so let me open this guy up. So Tonic um, is doing uh, their craft kit a little bit differently as far as the timing. So uh, today should be the 20th <laughs> and um, you'll have time to see the uh, kit if you're a subscriber already and make your choices as far as uh, keeping it or skipping if that's what you want to do or signing up or buying it just this one box and then not signing up and that's called the one-off purchase. So um, you'll have until I believe the 30th is when they start shipping. Uh, but you can read all about that there um, in the frequently asked questions and things since they did recently changed the way they do that. Um, I'm gonna put this here and see if we can still have some good light. Okay, so let's open this guy up. This is the, like I always say, meat and potatoes of the kit. It is the actual die set and stamp set for this month or for the, the kit. And um, like I said, it's called Vintage Pop-Up Sentiments. So we have our little sticker. You can take your sticker, you can stick it on here, you can put it wherever you like, but mostly it's to put it on there. So when you open it up, you can quickly see that it's vintage uh, what it is. Uh, this is technically kit number 46. It's the 46th kit, but um, with the new branding, it's just the uh, name of the kit there. Um, so we do have our dies split over the two acetates here, and then we have a photopolymer stamp set. It has You're the Best, Thank You, and For a Friend. Very lovely kind of art deco design on this. Let's bring these guys out. And what's awesome is this month, it also comes with instruction sheet, because this one is a little more... Um, involved I believe. Let me, I'm going to slip the instruction sheet out and I can see some of my dies kind of came off the carrier so I'm going to leave that in there very carefully just so that we can look at this. So, um, oopsie, I don't want that to stick. <laughs> Alright, there we go. So really quickly I will look at these dies. So we have these beautiful decorative dies here and it'll all make sense once we look at the instructions, I believe, with all these different shapes that might not be something typical that we normally see. And on this side, we have some rectangles, we have some pretty inserts, um, lots of pretty inserts in here. And again, it goes back to this little shape here and then we have like this swirl insert, really pretty, but let's take a look at this. So it says to create the pop-up easel card. You're gonna need two of these. We're gonna do a little something different with one of them. Glue those together. We're going to cut two of the rectangles, actually four of the rectangles, to glue them front and back so that the backs are touching each other. Uh, cut the spine, die, and fold on the score line. So we'll talk about that. Attach those two together to the four that then became two panels. Oh, okay. All right. This is what we're talking about. So then this is where we use that little, this part here that we create. And we're going to attach it in there. And then we have the layering die with two diagonal slits, which hug the base of the wing die cut the belt die twice and that slides over the closed card so when you open it I'm assuming it's going to kind of pop out the sentiment whatever it is that you choose to put in here so we will work on that and I think we're going to focus on that today because I want to make sure you guys know how to use it um, the instructions are pretty straightforward but I know it's always nice to see it kind of in action. Okay, let's check out the goodies. I love this little bag and I'm like I'm definitely going to recycle this paper use it in a different way uh, we have the card blanks and envelopes in ivory white, and these are A2 size. Let me check that out. Nice. Ooh, this is very purple, very pretty. Violet Infusion Pure Sheen Glitter. You see that gorgeous color. Very vibrant. We have some Nouveau Drops, and they're crystal drops in the color. Um, pale gold. I'm sorry, I was looking at it, it said metallic. I'm like, where's the name here? It goes pale gold. Really pretty. I don't know if you can see how soft that is. We have an ink in Spring Heather, and they are hybrid inks, so you can use these with um, water based markers, with alcoholic markers. They will not smear, so uh, Spring Heather hybrid ink. Very nice and purple tones is what I'm noticing here. Nouveau Chalk Mousse. Oh, so cool. I don't think I have any Chalk Mousse. Very interesting. Apply Chalk Mousse with a spatula. Dry naturally when dried. Gives a matte textured paste effect. Water-based product. And just add distilled water to soften the consistency if you would like to. That's pretty cool. 
It's a nice size there. And then, uh, I am loving this, that they're including things like these basic type of things, a, a craft tacky glue. I have never tried their tacky glue, so I'm really happy to have this. It has a little point there on the top. Really nice sized bottle. And some embossing powder in a really pretty soft lilac color is what it says. Oh my gosh, so cool. I love having those basics in there along with some fun things. I think last month we had a tape runner. So I, I like that, I like having those basics. Okay, and then these are our papers and I want to pull something up just so I can tell you guys the names of some of these colors. All right, and the papers are now in this really pretty folder again. Ooh, you can probably reuse this, make a little traveler notebook. How cute is that? <laughs> really pretty uh, paper there with that sheen. Okay, so we have just a beautiful colorway. You can see probably that already there. We have the pearlescent card in gleaming lilac. That's this one, love the pearlescent card. It is double-sided. We have the classic card in cream. And the classic card with um, tonic is textured. And the other side is less textured, but it still has a little bit of texture. Ooh, look at this one. This is lovely. Um, I want to say this one is called... Hmm. I think this one's Golden Mosaic. Just because it has that gold and it looks really... Look at this. Oh, and it has like a really smooth feel. Really pretty. On the back, um, it's white. It's one, one single-sided, I guess. And then I believe this is the uh, Peach Parfait with the little hearts. I love this paper, one of my favorite papers. It has like that handmade paper feel, back is uh, white. And then we have some classic card in mauve purple. It should be this way. Again, textured on one side, not so textured on the other. We have um, Lilac Waves, a specialty card, which is just lovely. I think, oh, you can see that really well. Kind of reminds me of the Santa's hat paper in red, but this one's uh, purple, single-sided. It has that cool texture on there. Um, then we have a specialty paper, a warm Dahlia. I love this style. I have this in like a pink color and I think some other maybe cream color. I haven't seen this warm Dahlia. So pretty. Looks like the big flowers and again that handmade paper feel. And then we have... Oh yeah, this is um, the Iridescent Mirror card in Petal Pink, I believe. So I love all the Iridescent cards. I, do I have Pale Pink? This one seems new to me. I have like Tidal Wave, Water Sprite, um, oh it's the other one that's more green. Anyhow, a few of them, but this is gorgeous. Really pretty colorway. So what I'm going to do is select some papers um, and we'll get started with the um, tutorial and see how to put together our card. Okay guys, so, so many beautiful colors to choose from. I think just to keep it um, simple as far as the card base and then we'll go from there and then keep it coordinating because to me this, that makes the you know front and back of your card and then this inside part seems to be one piece. Like I would want that to be all the same color, you know what I'm saying? Just so it kind of blends in. So uh, I'm gonna use the uh, cream colored card and we need four of these guys. Now the inside can be a different color or the outside can be a different color. You don't have to match, uh, these don't have to be the same color. Um, but I am going to do that. So I need, what I want to show you on this die set. Let me try to get this out. Okay. So we want two of this. Now you can see this one's different. This rectangle is different than this one. This one has like little divots it's going to cut out. So we want this guy. And we want two of these um, for each flap. So we need four, actually. So we're going to cut four of these. Sorry, so yeah, so I'll cut all four out on this. I think they're going to fit like this. Pretty much this one, this one, right? That's two. And then three, four. And then I'll have an area to cut out these twisty pieces. So I'm going to be very careful with how I do this, though. So I'm going to keep it right on the edge. Cut that one. Cut the next one right next to it. And then I'll still have some area where I can cut the little twisty pieces from. And then um, for these first pieces, so again, we're going to cut two. And I'll come back once it's actually cut, and then we'll do this other part of it. I'm going to cut four rectangles. Again, however you want to design those. And then um, for this outer spine piece, I'm going to use oh, that beautiful mosaic. This one here. 
and that would be this piece. This piece right here. And we just need one of that. So I'll cut this. And again, however I work it out on here, I'm going to cut two of these from the same cream colored paper. Okay, and I'll be back. Just quickly, I want to show you to get them all from one piece of paper. I cut this on the very top, of course, the two like I showed you. So one here, one here, and the piece that's still here is just enough to cut that last piece there. See that? So. Um, that's how I did it. <laughs> I just want to show you because in case you're wondering later. And then down here we have, again, enough space to cut both of these guys. And then another, even down here you can cut the other flap. So just want to show you how I got that from one piece. Okay, there's the last couple pieces. And look how pretty this, oh, this paper is just amazing. Look at this. Look at that. So pretty. Um, so we have our four pieces here. And on one of these wing pieces, you're going to take these other little aperture pieces and cut it. So whichever one, it doesn't matter, you're just going to pick one to do this with. And I'm just kind of looking at the picture because I want to see later on how this works. Yeah, they're going to tuck into each other. Okay. Actually, the picture shows it that it would be like this. And then cut into, but over here it is like this with the right side up and the little holes cut in there. So I'm not going to pay attention to that orientation. I'm going to do it the way the other picture shows. Just so that the holes are on the same side, you know, the, the way the die pushes in and all that. So we're going to take these two little guys. And basically you're going to put one here and one over here. And I'm just going to center them. That's kind of what it looks like. There's kind of like a divot around where the die was that makes it very easy to see where you do that. But you're only going to do this on one of them. So again, I'm kind of centering that. Left, right, up, and down. Same thing for this guy. Just eyeballing that, making sure it's about the same. Okay, I'm going to run this through. Just this one, and I'll be right back. Okay. Have those pieces there. So that was basically steps, you know, just to get everything cut for the base is what I did. But you have it steps here already now if you want to do it in that way. Uh, place the wing aperture dies on top of your wing. So we did that. And now we're on step three. Attach the wing dies using the tabs. So basically these guys are going to go together like this. But obviously they have some, some fun stuff we got to do with them. <laughs> so let me, I'm going to go ahead and score them. Just because I'm not really sure which way they need to score or what needs to happen here yet. But I will give them a little bend on each of the score lines and I'll be right back. This one too. Okay. So I just scored everything just to have it ready. Again, I'm not sure if it needs to go backwards or forwards or what. But I just scored them both ways to make it easy. And I'm just going to go down the tabs and attach them. So it just says attach the wing dies using the tabs. So usually we cover the tabs up. So I'm going to... Place this one first. And you know I like to use wet glue. If you want to use a dry adhesive, go ahead. So I'm just paying attention to, you know, that center line. Just holding those together. It does look kind of funny. Crisscrosses there. And since I'm using Nouveau Deluxe, it does hold on pretty quickly. And then these guys, these tabs, I'm assuming they kind of crisscross. So one's going to go here, one the other one goes underneath on the other side. And since they kind of already want to do that, I'm going to hold it open just a little bit. Get some glue on there. So tuck them into each other, basically. I'm kind of giving it some give. Do you see how it just wants to curve up on its own? So I'm kind of centering that um, just to make sure I'm doing this correctly. And then these two guys will hold on to each other down here. I'm trying to split the difference there and making sure that that's 
holding correctly. And if I have to adjust it, I'll just kind of tear it back, but hopefully this will be okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna hold this and make sure everything's uh, in place and I'll be right back. So I'm gonna put this to the side for now, but it looks like it wants to go like this. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> That's kind of what it's like tending to do. I'm just gonna give it a quick squish. See that? I think we're on the right track here. <laughs> That's basically what it wants to do. All right, so I'm gonna put it to the side because we don't need that right now. I have already um, attached one set of panels so the other ones we're going to glue them back to back so the cut side the side that has that rough cut to rough cut so that it looks nice on both sides we're just going to glue those together so i'm just going to glue that together wait for that to set up and then we'll add the spine so this is basically step four it's just to cut four of these flaps and then glue two of them together back to back just kind of lining them up smoothing those out And the next thing after that is that we're going to glue them on here. And then it says to fold the score lines. I'm just going to give them a little bit of a bend right now, just because I pretty much like to do that. <laughs> um, you know, it's up to you how you like to design or work with your items. I'm just going to give it a score now. Super easily scored. Look at that, because this paper is so nice and thick and just the way it embossed, it looks so lovely. So, okay, so I gave it a little bit of a score. I'm gonna wait for these to set up a little bit. And uh, basically, you know, step six is that we're just gonna uh, glue them to either side. All right, I think we're ready. So I'm just gonna put some glue on this part because it has that prettiness. I wanna make sure we're all in there. I'll take one of these guys. Eh. It's gonna be the same on either side until you decide to actually make your card. So I'm gonna place that right on that first score line. So you can see that little spine is there. I'm talking about the first score line from the right because there's another first score line on the left here that we're gonna line this up. So you have that little spine, see that little beige spine or white spine, should I say. That looks really nice. And I'll attach the other one. And I put the glue, I usually leave a little bit of a gap at the very edge because the glue is gonna squish. I know sometimes people ask me, how do you get it so the glue's not all over the place? I don't know if you can see, I leave like a little area. I don't go right to the very edge. And this guy... i go this way. And again, around that very edge and pay attention left and right. On that edge and then up and down. Oh, look how pretty that is. If you were to use this for like a little mini album, it has a little bit of a spine. That'd be so cute. Just put some little inserts in there. Okay, I'm going to wait for this to set up before I move on. Okay, as I was just smoothing it out, I picked that up. It just kind of wants to bend anyway because I already scored the score lines. But look at that. So pretty. Okay, so... Um, we're basically at step seven, and it says to place the wing dies at center of the inside of the card, which I'm assuming means to glue it in place. It just says place, but but I'm going to do that after I get the next piece cut, just so I can kind of keep working. So number eight is to cut the layering die with two diagonal slits, which hugs the base of the wing die, so it'll just kind of go in here. Um, so I am going to take this piece, the piece that has those little cutouts there and I'm going to choose some paper to cut out two of these and I'll be right back. Okay so I went ahead and chose the warm dahlia paper. I think that'll look really pretty. There is another die that you can also you know top this with but since I'm using the dahlia paper it already has some fun texture but you can also cut a piece of paper with this guy. Let me just show you real quick and this little pretty design would have something that you could nest in there and it has its own frame, so it cuts out completely in one piece. So you have that guy, and then you can have this guy that can layer on top. It's not an insert, because if you use this together, they would cut a little tiny frame in the center, because this already has its own die uh, cut edge there. Let me put this here. So I have these guys, and my mechanism here. And I'm just kind of making sure I have this right. I'm going to make it bend how I need it to. And I'm just looking at the pictures here, so I kind of centered it so it's 
a little more even there. And as I look at the picture, it has the two slits, the side that has the slits on the facing up, okay? So these little pieces should be facing up. And also, again, it's going to go in here. So I just want to make sure that I have this all kind of lined up right. Like if this was tucked in here, well, we'll tuck that in a little bit. But so this needs to go right down the center. I'm just trying to pay attention to how much center. <laughs> like in there. All right. I'm just going to go for it. So I'll put a little glue on this side. Again, I use wet glues. If you want to use a dry adhesive, go ahead. But you're putting it on this, not these other pieces. These pieces need to move. These pieces need to stay. <laughs> so I'm kind of butting it up to the edge. Not quite in the whole complete center. And I'm looking left and right. And I'm going to hold this down till it sets up. But because this is the first time I'm doing this and I'm not sure exactly how far in, I'm going to open it up just so I can see what's going on here. That way if I have to make any adjustments, I will. So that would tuck in there and this would tuck in here. I just want to make sure that I'm centered. Not bad. I think that's actually pretty good. Okay, yeah, we're good. So I'll keep it. I'm going to put a little weight on that just to keep that from popping open. And I'll be back. Okay, so there it is. And then that's going to hold up our little pop-up, basically. So you can see there. You can kind of stretch it as much as you can, but I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to put some glue on this. Again, I'm using a wet glue. Whatever you prefer to use. Especially with a textured paper like this. Um, I like to use wet glues. I'll put a little extra here and there. And... What I'm going to do is take one side before it really sticks down and slide it into those little areas in this side too. And I'll position it before I really stick it down. Looks good. I suppose if you really wanted to, you could just uh, close the card and that'll help you <laughs> kind of stick it down. Right? Instead of just kind of massaging each area that's in here. But that's really, really inventive. Just the way it kind of cuts in there and it fits in there really nicely. And I'll do the same thing <clears throat> excuse me, for the top. Put some glue and slide it in here and here. Get that settled in there. Oh, and I'll be back. Hey guys. That looks very fancy. <laughs> it's that paper. Look at that. So pretty. So um, that is basically the basic, you know, card base. We're going to talk about the little mechanism in a little bit as far as uh, put, putting that in there. But it does say to cut the belt die twice and adhere to each other via glue tabs. And then you pop that on there. So I think I'll use the same gorgeous gold paper for this. And I'm going to cut two of this strip here. Okay, and I'll be right back. All right, we have our two pieces here. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to score them because, again, I prefer to do that usually when things are just flat. This paper scores so nicely. Okay. And we're going to glue them together. So I'm going to put a little glue on this tab. Since this is a slick surface, it's going to want to slip around until it sets up. So um, I'm just going to take this guy, pop it on here. And again, I scored mine first. You can lay it flat. You don't have to do what I'm doing. And so I'm going to hold that until it sets up. I'll be right back. Okay, I do want to show you as you're holding it. You can even squish it flat because of the score lines, so you can do that and hold it. But since it still might be a little bit wet again because of that um, slippery nature of this metallic paper, I'm not going to slip this on here quite yet until later. But this is basically to hold your card base. So pretty. Okay, so that was step 10. I don't have any other steps, so I'm assuming, I don't know um, if this other part is just kind of straightforward. I'm looking at my pieces here, and there's a few things. So we haven't used this guy, and I think this is what's gonna hold our sentiment, and it's gonna go in place here somehow, okay? So we have that guy. There is this little piece here that 
echoes that shape. So it looks like there's like some layering pieces if you want to make it fancier. There's another one of it over here. Nothing in the center area, but we have these ovals that I'm assuming that's what we're going to use to decorate with. Looks like it goes right in there, right? Or however you want to use it. I think. So we have this guy, just the oval. Or maybe he goes like this, if you want to use this guy, however you want to place it. I think it has to be a certain way, though, to fit within that. So what I'm going to do is, let's put this up for now, is only focus on this part of it, the mechanism. And I think I will cut it out of... <laughs> let's go with the gold paper again, just because it's so nice and sturdy. So I'm going to cut this piece from that same uh, gold mosaic, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my piece here. Again, I just cut it from this really sturdy stuff um, maybe that you want to make it double-sided it looks like it's symmetrical so if you cut two of them you can probably put them both together and glue them back to back because this is a single-sided paper and I think this just goes in here <laughs> so it has like a little area that's a little bit higher and lower you know a little bump so I'm gonna put the higher end first yeah I think it's something like that right close it up and then they can adjust that <laughs> I don't think we're going to glue this down because I think it's meant to to kind of move around like that so okay I'm going to pop that back out because if you want to decorate you can decorate it with again these little tab pieces and there's also um, little insert pieces that we can pop in there and then this guy so I want to pay attention to what that might look like so I'm gonna cut this out with some different layers I'm gonna cut this guy out and then I'll cut this one with this and I stuck to all the cream colors you know you can play around with that however you like I think I'll cut this out with the cream color and then I'll cut this out of something else I'll be right back okay so like I said you have all these different pieces we can do the little inserts we can do you know your base pieces I just want to show you those so you know what those were for uh, put this back over here so I did cut this out with the beige paper and then I got this guy with the insert um, with that same gold paper I wasn't sure if I was gonna use it because I wasn't sure if it was going to um, show up because it has texture but it looks great so I'm gonna pop out all these little pieces and I'll be right back Okay, and on this guy, I'm just going to put the little glue out here. Back of my hand, of course, for the little delicate lettering. It also kind of helps that glue around the edge kind of flatten out. Oh, I love that. Now I went pretty much monochromatic in the colors that I chose, but in the set we have all those beautiful purples. It would be really nice. And then this little guy can go in there. I'm going to glue it straight down just because, you know, uh, this is the first time I've done this and I want to make sure that it's going to work out. But if you want to put it on a dimensional, I think you probably could do that. I might put too, too much. And... I'm going to like Cinderella's little carriage there. Okay. I'm going to pop this in here just because I want to pay attention to how high or low I should put that on there. Like when it closes up. Right there. Okay, I just didn't want it sticking out of here. Okay, I think we're okay. Alright, I'm going to let that set up and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so we have our little card. It feels very substantial because there's lots of layers in there. And when they open it up, it has a little pop-up here super sweet and it just does its own thing I mean obviously I had to adjust it there but like hopefully you kind of see because it kind of goes like in a little rainbow shape there you can put anything on there really that you would like Aww. <laughs> um, I did want to point out I you know I did the basic mechanism I want to make sure that that's clear for everyone and how to do that and stuff but I mean you can have these little decorations for this guy there's some inserts there's um, inserts or things that you can put on the band so if you wanted to cut a couple of the band or just another piece there, you have that. There's the little layering pieces that go into this area here. There's these guys that I didn't even touch yet. And what's cool about these, I don't know if you can see, 
on this outside I used a decor of paper already but these guys can be cut from anything else it cuts its own edge too so it's not an inlay it's it does its own thing so you can take that and layer it up on top of here and make it look really pretty and there's a couple of those so really cool so hopefully that gives you guys an idea of the basic mechanism and how to um, get that going look at this <laughs> so cute um all right guys thanks for watching uh i'll have the links in the description box thank you so much tonic for sponsoring the video oh let's put our little belt on <laughs> there you go and it slides on really nicely again and you can even take that same little die or any die that you have and add a little sentiment on the outside too all right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll have the links there for you. You can see a little more about the uh, know, kit. Before I get and I'll all wrapped up. I'm putting this stuff away. And um, don't forget, you have the stamp set. So the stamp set, you know, you can even just pop that on there. You're the best. You can put that here or there. This little pretty gal here can be stamped on the band if you wanted to do that instead of like a decorative piece like this. You can do your stamping. Um, the other thing is also, you know, this piece that we cut here, if you were to cut another one, I think you can probably get it under here as a mat if you wanted to, you know. So, lots of ways to play with it. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next one. Bye now.